I want people to have access. So you're giving them a way to get into this Bitcoin. So tell us how we do this. Okay, so our platform allows folks to actually store Bitcoin. And with a recent uh, approval of the Central Bank of Zimbabwe to work with a bank called Agribank, we're going to actually leverage it for remittances. So right now, Africa has the highest remittance fees than any other continent. And it's not because of technology. It's because of the choices, the options that are in Africa. So it's a predatorial business model. So even- See, I'm not surprised, go ahead. So, so just, but, but it's so, so uh, the same of what we're dealing with in America. We got payday lenders in our community. Right, so, and, and our community uses payday loans. We just, uh, we were talking about that with one of my producers because we're the next phase, we have homework, right, on the show. So for four months, we're doing weight. The next four months is gonna be uh, money, right, wealth, and the last four months, wisdom so for the next 12 months we're on this thing so we're planning right now for the homework for the next round but we're talking about the payday lending that's in our community and we you know, we refuse to take any ads on this show that promotes that we refuse and we've been asked hell no you will never hear a payday loan on this show because we can never promote something that will destroy us financially right so now we should actually create alternatives so in, in, uh, instead of protesting these things, I'm saying let's create something that actually works better, that's faster, and more transparent. So when we say that we're gonna use Bitcoin to transfer value to Zimbabwe, again, I just told you, unlike what we deal with today, where if you have a dollar in your pocket, you gotta use PayPal, Visa, you gotta use a third party to move that dollar somewhere else. A wire transaction to Swift, and you gotta wait three days right with bitcoin it instantly instantly transferred so how do you get the bitcoin where do you get because it used to be this algorithm this computer thing you would get on yeah, there yeah, do yeah, solve yeah, yeah. an so, equation you know so, yeah, come so, on now so, so there's okay just to break it down a little bit and i'm just trying to be helpful but at the same time i don't want to get people thrown off with the blockchain each block is confirmed by a group of people who are trying to solve a algorithm like you just said the reward for solving that algorithm is a bitcoin so the way bitcoins are created are because you have people thousands and thousands of people all over the world trying to solve this transaction to verify it so instead of it being microsoft or oracle confirming your transaction or visa saying okay that transaction it's actually the one of the first times in history where you got thousands of people decentralized all over the place actually fighting to solve that transaction so you can actually transfer it that they don't know each other they're using the same information the same block everybody's looking at the same block and it's almost gamification they're trying to hurry up and solve it and whoever solves it meaning whoever has a, the, the fastest computer that can solve it correctly they then their reward is a bitcoin so that's how it's created now, once that block is created, everybody gets that same block through consensus. Everybody now, so that so you start, there's a genesis block. The first block that somebody solved, this equation, is stored. That transaction is stored forever, ever, ever, ever. It's called the genesis block. So you can actually trace Bitcoins all the way back from day one. When people say it's anonymous, it doesn't say the name of the person, but there's a thing called an address. It's almost like a account. A IP it's like an address, okay. Okay. but so so that account never they can't no one can go back and change it. Okay, so then the next block is done, and they, they race to whoever, and whoever wins gets the Bitcoin. So now we got this blockchain that's been around basically since like 2009. It's a long chain, but it's still able to fit on a computer where everybody has the same blocks. So no one gets their own blocks. I got my blocks, you got your blocks. The next transaction comes. I'm trying to get this thing solved so I can win a Bitcoin. Now what happens with the Bitcoin? Now when they used to be worth almost nothing. Who wants a Bitcoin? Nobody, until somebody did. And what happened is people say, okay, I'll, I'll give you this for that Bitcoin. So there's a big deal, just a few days ago, it was like the pizza day. Mm -hmm. There was like a person that actually like used 10,000 Bitcoins to buy like two pizzas. Now 10,000 pizza now, 10,000 10, 10, Bitcoin Bitcoins. right now when it's going for $2,000 would be like, <laughs> almost like a billion dollars right, or something right. crazy. So my point is, because of supply and demand. So anytime you hear someone say they know, they don't understand how it gets its value, it's just like the analogy used with gold. 
Euro Europeans went around the world killing folks for rocks. I don't care what you think about gold and people or diamonds. Love, or diamonds, but gold is on a periodic table. It's just a rock. It has a certain malleability, certain metallic value, but the fact that people are killing folks for it is really some human activity it has nothing to do with it's actual the, value yeah it, you can't eat it like if the world was coming to an end the guy with a bunch of goats would outweigh the guy with, with gold you would want to be with the sister with the goats than the guy with all the diamonds because he can't eat them he's gonna last for three weeks and he's gonna go for the goats so my point is we've we got these systems already operating that aren't based on anything that's really about helping us. Right. So now we have a tool that we can use and the value is now created by a central bank. Like right now the US dollar has value. It's not pegged to a gold. It's because it's we're told that it has a dollar. But you think about it, if they print a bunch of them, shouldn't the value of the one go down? No, because the government says it's not. Well, okay, I get it. But that means it's politically motivated by people who we don't even see or know. But we're Americans, so we like cool, I guess, until it doesn't work out. And then we wonder what happened to my value of my dollar. Well, Greece, these other people have gone through that Ponzi scheme of these paper currencies. Come on now. And what's even more powerful about what you're saying, we need to continue this conversation in the hub. I already know. I already know because where we want to go, we can't go here. But what I want to say to you is, you know, the Ponzi scheme that you talk about. <laughs> When we took the gold standard off of the dollar, it's not backed by anything. So it's all about what we agree that this dollar is worth. And once people say that this dollar is worthless, the the whole house of cards come for That's what right. happened to some people who lost their lives. So we're going to talk about that off mic because we're not talking about that on mic. But people have lost their lives over the notion of devaluing something that everyone has agreed has value only because they agree it has value, not because it has actual value. And that's a conversation we must have. I also want to talk to you about the the Africa thing. We'll talk about that off mic. You have a question? Yeah, I just wanted to know. So your company your company is set up as an exchange. So if I wanted to exchange a thousand dollars for Bitcoin, is that something that you make easy for the layman person? So we connect exchanges. So we work with uh, Uphold mm -hmm. as our exchange. Okay. And then the last mile, like in Zimbabwe, there's no one actually accepting Bitcoin for for buying anything. So what we allow fo folks to do come August 1st, well, they'll be able to take Bitcoin, send that value of Bitcoin to their grandmama in, in Zimbabwe, and she'll be able to take it and cash it out for, for, for cash. cash. Whatever the currency is in Zimbabwe. Right, right now they use the dollar. Okay. So we, we wow. have a, a dollar, we have a, a, we're gonna have a, a float account in dollars, mm -hmm. and she'll be able to pick up cash. So we're able to, instead of the typical 10% fees and all that, mm -hmm. since these transactions are almost free, and we're able to create a fee structure with the local bank that benefits the bank to make it like profitable for them, but at the same time lower than anyone else. Right. Because the technology is available. It's just a predatorial business model that keeps these fees so high. Right, right. Ooh. So in reverse, are you also a savings account for the person in Zimbabwe? What if she didn't want to cash in the money that was being sent to her in Zimbabwe? Does so, she get to save that and allow it to accumulate? So at this point, no. That's a okay. great question. So we have not been given the authorization to allow people to use Bitcoin in Zimbabwe as a currency. They haven't approved that. We, step by step. Mm -hmm. They have allowed us. But no country would likely do that because then it's, it goes against that country's currency, really. Well, well I'm going to tell you this. In Zimbabwe, they did away with their currency in 2009. They had hyperinflation mm -hmm. and you needed big bags of money <laughs> in order to buy things. They came up with a multi-currency regime. They take the Rand, they take the Pula, which is Botswana's money, they take the Kwacha, which is uh, Malawi's money and Zambia's money, they take the US dollar as a cash reserve, mm -hmm. and they take the Yuan from China. So you can actually buy something with dollars and they'll give you Rand in change, or Pula in change. Yeah. So they really have an international eco economy. And in a real way, most African, no, these African currencies aren't real currencies anyway. Mm -hmm. They're manipulated they, they by the Europe. Dollar. No, I'm saying they're even worse. No, the dollar's terrible. I'm just, I'm, I'm all right, 866-801-825, stop. And I know India's having the same problem. 
right? They right. they have the currency is gone. They're eliminating denominations left and right. The lines in wow. India to get right, food right, right. and money are all in overnight. Overnight, it happens. The to rupee these poor is people. The, this, it can happen overnight. Is the point that I'm making? Has to happen overnight. No, it can. Yeah. Ha- it ha- it can happen overnight. Mm-hmm. All it takes is for people to agree that this doesn't. This is not worth anything anymore. Right. All it takes is for uh, somebody to have a crazy leader that everybody agrees is crazy and they no longer want to do business with that country for that country's currency i'm saying something to y'all right now eight six six eight zero one india did that they said they're, they're, you have that no i'm saying it's no longer they no longer, no, no longer legal tender right. you had to get another kind of note. right yes and I'm if you don't turn it in over like the next two days that's, you, you that's your ass yes. right i'm just saying let's go to the phones let's take a couple of calls eight six six eight zero one eight two five five is the number y'all trying to get me to say stuff